Hello, my name is Mary Beth Napoli and I'm from the US. I have been bilaterally implanted for five years in sequential surgeries that were eight months apart. I started losing my hearing at age 13 and after a surgery to treat many ears on my right side, that ear processed no sound for 24 years <clears throat> before being implanted and it was the first one that was implanted. I started playing instruments when I was eight years old. My main instrument is clarinet. I played clarinet and extended to alto sax in every band possible through school. So uh, jazz bands, marching bands, concert bands, orchestras, um, pit bands for school musicals. And music was a huge part of my life Later, I started playing around with piano, but had no formal training in piano. As my hearing loss progressed, music became more and more difficult. And several decades before getting cochlear implants, the piano was useless. It just sounded like a bunch of noise and we donated it. Um, I continued to listen to all types of music uh, as best as I could with more and more powerful hearing aid on the one ear that processed sound. Prior to getting my CIs, one of the most memorable events that pushed me finally into pursuing CIs was related to music. We were at a friend's wedding reception and I could not even figure out the beat in the music that was playing to dance. It just was a bunch of, of noise that had no pattern. And it was very isolating. So really I went into cochlear implants to improve understanding speech because my world had gotten really small and I wasn't cognizant of the impact that cochlear implants would have on music. I was just trying to get speech back um, because my life had gotten really small. I was communicating one-on-one -on -one and needing to speech read and beginning to wonder if I was gonna be able to stay employed. I was so frustrated at the end of every day. After I received my first cochlear implant, I started to do oral rehab um, right away and I wanted to see whether or not I could tell whether or not two, two notes played on a keyboard were the same or different. So wasn't trying for um, is the second pitch higher or lower, just are these two tones the same or different? And I couldn't do it. Both notes played on an electronic keyboard sounded exactly the same <clears throat> no matter what the semitone difference was between the notes um, at all. So we just set that aside and continued on my journey. Music with my CIs has been a gift that has been opened slowly. I started listening to a lot of talk radio um, while I was training my CI in the car. And one day I noticed that I knew that they weren't speaking, that they had switched to music. And I thought possibly it was a piano. So that night when I got home, I looked up the transcript for the talk radio station and they had switched to music and it was a piano. And I was really excited. So I started to listen to as much music as I could, all different kinds, new music or music that I had known prior to um, the big drops in my hearing. And I started to notice that I could pick up the rhythm of the music. And then I was able to hear the high frequency instruments um, in the music and I had lost all high frequency tones a really long time ago. And then I was getting the bass instruments and slowly more and more of the music was filling in. A friend sent a link to a um, music group that um, she enjoyed listening to and I had never heard of them. so. I followed the link to listen to the instrumental and it was beautiful, it sounded great. And I was listening to it and I was like, that's a saxophone. 
that that's not an alto saxophone. I think it's a tenor saxophone. So after I was done listening, I looked up the group and I looked up the song and it was a tenor saxophone. So it was so exciting to have the distinct voices of the musical instruments starting to come, um, to come back. Um, we were at a restaurant that had an attached bar and the bar was a separate room but it was right next door to where we were eating and at one point during dinner um, a band started a live band started playing and my family commented on how awesome the clarinet sounded and I was like that's a clarinet and they're like yeah that's a clarinet so I was like hmm okay it doesn't sound like a clarinet to me so they're like, what does it sound like to you? And I'm like, to me, that sounds like a muted trumpet. And they're like, no. So when we were finished, the band was still playing. And when we were walking out, I detoured into the bar and it was a muted trumpet. So I was like, wow, this is, this is quite exciting. It's really exciting. Um, after about eight to nine months of having my second CI, I began to get interested in playing the piano again. So we had to go out and buy <laughs> and buy a piano. We bought a digital piano and I started to take lessons. So I'm just way back at the beginning, um, taking um, piano lessons and trying to get all the finger memory down pat. Um, what was interesting about that was I would sit at the piano and I would play the scales and the notes just didn't sound right. And I would just keep playing the scales, going up and going down, going up and going down. And then they would start to fall into place and I'd practice. And then the next day I'd sit down to play the piano and the scales didn't sound right. And I'd do the scales over and over and over again, trying to train my brain and then they would start sounding better. And at some point I was playing the piano long enough or often enough or over a course of months that I could skip days in between playing the piano and sit down and it just started off sounding right. Um, so that was uh, really exciting. There have been a ton of great moments for me with music and my CIs. Uh, we attend concerts in big arenas, live Broadway shows in New York City. I love all kinds of music. The Grammys 2016 album will forever hold a special place in my heart because it's the first album I have ever listened to where I learned all the words to the songs just by repeated listening and not needing to look up lyrics or anything like that. So that was exciting. I can listen to music and it can give me physical sensations like goosebumps and move me. It's just beautiful. We were at a big band um, live concert and they had positioned the trombones in the front row and the trumpets were behind them. And as I was listening, I thought that the trombone that was all the way over on the right side of the stage was playing lower tones than the other trombones. And I thought that that trombone just had different sheet music than the other trombones. And later in the performance, they introduced the different members of the band and their instrument. And that trombone was a bass trombone. I did not even know bass trombones existed. So it was a deeper trombone than the other ones all along, you know. So those things have all been awesome musical events, um, experiences and wow moments for me with my CIs. But there's also been difficulties with music and my CIs. I think I'm fortunate that when I listen to the beeps or tones that go along with my electrodes, they go in the correct pitch order. But they are not separated by the same distance. So it's a little hard to explain, but if you played, if you played a chromatic scale on the piano going up, what I would hear overall was that the pitches were all going up, but the difference 
between one note and the very next note played, it's not always the same difference. So it's kind of like climbing stairs where the staircase, the, the separate steps are not evenly spaced apart. And this leads to lots of problems when you're doing oral rehab um, apps or activities. And I've been doing some that are for music majors to help with pitch comparison because I cannot tell you what is the smallest semitone difference I can notice. I can tell you that when I do the app that I'm consistently correct on six, five, four, three semitone differences. I make some mistakes on two, but I can get that right. I make more mistakes on one semitone difference, but I can also get that right. But I can't really say what my semitone difference is because it depends on which pitch you choose to play for me. Because the difference between C and C sharp, middle C and C sharp, is not the same difference as I experience between G and G sharp. So obviously, if you're picking frequencies, that are spaced further apart in my pitch perception, even though they're consecutive chromatic notes on the piano, it's gonna be easier for me to notice the difference in semitones when we're down to one semitone different. And if you pitch, pick the two um, pitches that are almost identical with the slightest difference, then it's going to be a lot more difficult for me to be consistent on that. Another um, factor with my CIs and music, and this um, concerns me with research um, with CI users, is the impact on me of the front end processing or the pre-processing that all the companies are working hard at to help us hear better in noise, to hear speech better in noise. Those front end or pre-processing um, systems, they have really negative impacts for me on music. So I understand the need to design cochlear implants so it can help people who are having trouble understanding speech and noise hear easier in noise, but at the same time, it's hard to have the um, those front end processings negatively impact music. The other problem um, for me is that when you read research on those front end processing, they're comparing the front end processing being turned on all the time, speech and quiet scores and speech and noise scores, and they're showing that it's not negatively impacting speech and quiet. Therefore, it's a solid strategy to use and because it's helping people in speech and noise. But I've never read a study that's comparing those front end processings as opposed to just um, like an omni mic setting and that's not dampening any of the bass noise sounds or anything like that um, on the effect of music appreciation. And another problem is when people try to design music programs um, for CIs. To me, it's a little bit um, ineffective because music for me is not a solo event. I am not listening to music all the time just by myself with no speech or other people involved. But music is going on while we're having conversations or we're listening to music and then someone's making a comment. So it's very difficult to have just a, a dedicated program just for music so you're listening just to music with that program all the time. Because I want music to sound good to me in my everyday program um, and stay in my everyday program for, for all types of listening events. So the return of music to my life has, has just been a, a wonderful, unexpected gift of my cochlear implants. I thank every researcher who is studying how to improve music for CI users, um, especially those researchers who are helping us with pitch. <laughs> um, so thank you very much. And I would love the opportunity to, to participate in the symposium and to be a member of the CI panel, sharing my experiences with music, with 
you, the researchers who are working hard to improve the quality of music that we perceive as CI users. So thank you very much for this opportunity.